All right, let's talk about debugging and how we can improve the process of debugging in JavaScript. I've got a sample file here that I've written with um, examples of a whole variety of console methods. Now, most of the time in the code samples that I'm doing in my tutorials, I'm showing how to use console.log just to write something out to the console. But there are actually a variety of methods that we can use. Console.count first one that I have inside here, counts the number of times that this method has been called. And optionally, we can add a label inside of here. So I'm counting two things, Ricky and Bobby. Uh, just These are my two labels. I'm using these two strings. So the first time this runs, I'm passing in Ricky. It's going to say that uh, Ricky has been called one time. Down here, it's going to say Bobby's been called one time. And then when I call this function up here, it's going to be passing Ricky in. Ricky will be used as the label. So this will come back and say twice for Ricky, three times for Ricky, and then twice for Bobby, and then four times for Ricky. So we're counting the number of times that each of these methods has been called with these individual labels. On top of that, we have console.time, and it's paired with time end. This will allow me to count the number of milliseconds that it takes from this point in my code to this point in my code. And again, we can stick a label in here, so if we want to track the time for different things, we can attach a label to each one, and then it'll be written out inside of our uh, console window. Group allows you to indent things, so group and group end works the same way as time and time end. You have a starting point, an ending point, and just the way I've written it inside of here, I've added some extra indents. You don't need these in your code, but putting these indents here is what it will look like inside of the console in the browser. This isn't going to happen on the terminal, but in the browser. This point will be indented, and then this part right here will be indented further. And then as for the formatting for the messages that we're logging out, we have console.log, which is the standard one we use most of the time, console.info, or console.error. So these will be slightly differently formatted within the console window. So we can take a look at those. I'm going to run it once here. There we go. So you can see the Ricky, Bobby, Ricky, Ricky, Bobby, Ricky. Those are the count functions being called. Log info error. Inside of the uh, terminal window, we're just going to get the same thing. So these aren't going to be formatted differently. But in the browser, they will be. And then here is the number of milliseconds it took to get from this point to this point. All right. Now, let's go take a look at this same code inside the console in the browser. All right, so we'll jump over here, we'll refresh to make sure we have the latest copy of it. I'm going to open up the console, and here we are. So we've got console.log, console.info. Here's the console.error, and it's telling us the line number as well, the file and the line number where this error occurred. So a slightly different format that we can see. Um, here's the grouping, and this is the time result. So this was the label we used, Ricky, and it took 0 0.135 milliseconds. Okay, great. So a whole bunch of console methods that we can take advantage of. Now another one, let's say we don't have this open. I'm going to comment out the error. I'm going to move yeah, I'll just leave it like that. I'm going to con comment this out. I don't want an error showing up in my console. I'm going to create a constant up here called debug mode. Now, this is not something that's required. It's just something that's a handy tool to use when you're trying to debug some. There's a keyword in JavaScript called debugger. And if I put that inside my code, then it will, when the code runs here, it will actually launch the web dev tools and jump to the console. I want to be able to turn this on and off just by changing this between true and false. So somewhere in my code I'm going to write if debug mode. So if that's true, then debugger. Okay, that's saved. Now this if statement is not required. This is the only part that's required, this keyword debugger. And I'm going to open this just so that I can empty the cache and hard reload, make sure I've got an absolutely new version. And here's the keyword debugger. 
So it jumped to the Sources tab, and it brought up my script and jumped to this keyword debugger. Then I can say resume the script execution, and it goes on. This just provides us with an opportunity to create breakpoints inside of our code. So if I want my code to pause, let's say, at this point, and then again at this point, and then again at this point, we can click on these numbers inside of this panel. This is, again, through the sources. I'm in debug.js. With each of these, I'm setting breakpoints. So I'm telling it when the page runs the next time, I want to pause it here, here, and here so that I can look at various things. So we refresh. I get the debugger. Oh, and even if I close this and I rerun the page. Ah. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky with that. There we go. It will jump to this uh, debugger, um, even if this is not showing. Sometimes it caches whether or not the debugger is uh, enabled. In any case, uh, we're at this point. This is where it's paused. My breakpoints, if I say resume, I'm just saying run to the end of the script unless you find a breakpoint. If I say step over, this is one by one, one line at a time, go through the code. So it jumped from the debugger down to console.count. Console That's my next one. You can see I can mouse over to find out what B is. And then it'll go to the next line. Here we are. And I can find out where we are in the code. Step to the next one. Jumps to console.count. Step over. Next, next. Or this one will jump all the way down to here. There we are, because it goes to the next breakpoint. Instead of one line at a time, or to the next breakpoint, or to the end of the script. And there we go, to the very end. The console, there we are, you can look to see. That took 13.6 seconds to execute, because it was still counting while we had the breakpoint activated. Well, we paused in the middle. The count with console.time and console.time end was still running in the background. All right, back into here. A couple of other little tips and tricks. I'm going to remove these guys. And down here, pretty print. Now, usually this is for JSON to spread things out and make it easier to read, but it also works on regular JavaScript files. This one function here, you may have been wondering why I had this combined onto one line. It was just so I could show you this. There we go. Click on this, and now it's spreading things out. It lined everything up, got rid of those extra tabs that I had inside of here. My function has been spaced out like this. So it's just a little bit easier to read the code. That's what Pretty Print does. And you can see debug.js. This is the formatted version. Here's the original version. I can go back and forth between the two of them. I can set breakpoints now like this one, inside of my function. So I'm going to do it right here on the return true. That means it's going to pause before this return statement runs. And if we rerun our script, there we go, got to the debugger, and we'll say go ahead and keep running. So it's going to jump, it's going to run this, and then it's going to go here to this, which we'll call this function, and then this one will call the function again. So resume, keep going to the next breakpoint. That's line 13. Now, because my breakpoint's inside this function, I'm able to look at some of the variables. And we can see that the local scope inside of my function has a variable called nm, and its value is Ricky. This, the context, if you'd use the keyword this inside of here, would have been the window object. And inside of global, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but up here at the top, we've got b and r, the window object is the global object, and it has a property called B and a property called R, which are our global variables from right here. That's what happens when you declare global variables, is you're actually adding them to the global object, whether it's global or window. These are being added to that. Okay, so we have a whole variety of console methods. We've got the pretty print, which will format things. We've got breakpoints that we can step through one at a time or 
go jump to the next breakpoint or run to the end of the script. The debugger keyword is going to open up this panel for us. And one last thing, if you're inside the uh, sources tab and you want to open up another file, the command P or control P if you're on Windows allows you to search for so let's say the debug.html was the file that I wanted to open and look at. Command P for the search in the project for the file that you want. That's what the command P will do. All right, hopefully that will help you out with some of the debugging and finding your errors. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please, or questions, please leave them in the comments.